Hey there, welcome to my tutorial about how to draw cats. In this video I'm going to show you the basic anatomy and some tips and tricks which will serve as a foundation for more cat related tutorials in the future. Well then, let's start. At first I'm going to draw a very simple oval shape and already from the get go I have to explain a few things. First of all, why do I use an oval shape like that? Well, the reason is very simple, if you look at the skull, and all these drawings that I show you are actually from my research, and I'm simply reusing them. So you see here that we can actually approximate the shape of the skull when you look at it from the side with an oval shape, which becomes more and more of a circular shape as we look at it from the front or behind. Keep in mind that it's not perfect, you have to make some adjustments, erase a few parts like maybe here at the cheek area or around the eyes. And so you have to know it's a bit of a steeper learning curve, probably. But in my personal experience it works better for getting the shape and the proportions right for the face and the head. But it's just me, you can also prefer to use a different technique. Alright, and the other thing is, you can see that this oval shape is slightly tilted downwards, although I'm planning on having the cat look straight forward. This is just simply how the skull is orientated. When the cat looks straight forward, the skull will point slightly downwards. So if we draw an oval shape that's perfectly horizontal, the cat would actually look upwards. So next off will be the neck. You can start from below this oval shape, just a short line, like so a short curve, and then it transitions over to the spine. And the spine, as you probably know, is very flexible, so it can have all sorts of um, curvatures. So first of all we need to know the distance between the hip bone and shoulder, which is about two and a half to three units of the skull length. So this would be this plus a little bit of extra because we look at it from the side. And then I'm just guessing here, I don't have to be super exact about it. It's not that important. So something like that. And that's good enough. And so this point here would then be the point where the hip starts and then I'm gonna curve up for the tail, give it some sort of wavy shape here. And next up will be the legs. We start with the shoulders which can move separately, if we look here, they are not co directly connected and therefore I'm gonna have them separated. But the hip bone cannot, the hip bone is one singular bone therefore we, have, we are only drawing here one line. Keep in mind that you still would want to draw an axis between the shoulder points and the hip points here, uh, which will also follow the rules of perspective. But in this case here we look at it perfectly from the side, the back is about our eye level and therefore we don't really see it, it's just one point here. Later in this video I will have more complex examples. So, I'm gonna draw at first the upper legs here and I have to keep in mind that they're on different levels more and more as we get further down, simply because of perspective. And the length of the upper and lower legs are about, as you can see here, the length of the skull, maybe slightly longer than that. Alright, and next up will be the feet and the feet are quite interesting. So let's at first take a closer look. We have here this middle part of the foot and then you can see that the cats are actually walking on the tips of their toes, cushioned by the paw pads, and this whole thing also stands on an additional paw pad right here at the back in the middle. Then up here, kind of like a stubby thumb, you have the dew claw, which only is there for the front legs, and here this cowboy pad, this small little nub, which function is still kind of a mystery to me, I don't quite know what it's there for. What I originally read was that it serves as an additional break of some sorts, but I'm not sure about that. If you know more about it, please let me know in the comment section. Okay, so I have just these small lines here for this middle part and then for the feet I just approximate them with simple small oval shapes. Now for the back legs we will actually do it the other way around, which means I will have here this level of where the hip would be, like the hip level. And then I will have one of the legs slightly at the back and the other one 
move forward like so. And then from there on you can just simply connect. The only thing you have to know is how to draw this bone here, this part here. And this depends on where the foot is in relation to the hip. So here it's further back, which means it is more vertical than the other one. This is the only thing you have to remember. And then from there, and I'm gonna leave a little bit of extra because we have this small extension. We just simply play connect the dots, as simple as that. The only thing you have to make sure is that the bones are equally long and they have the correct length. So it is kind of a trial and error thing. But you can also can develop an eye for it, I guess. And it's pretty simple normally. And there we go, this is close enough. And additionally, you can also decide to have a rib cage sketched in like so, but it is not necessary. Now let's draw some more details. At first I will have a placeholder for the nose, which is right underneath this intersection between the center lines. And then let's take a closer look at how the nose is constructed. Here are some more examples. You can see that the nose is very round, especially at the front. Its shape can be a bit complicated depending on the angle, but there is a simple technique. We start from the lower corner, draw this little V shape, we still have to keep perspective in mind. And then we hook around, like so, just a round shape and then curve back up. And we're drawing this over here too, but it's more of a, like an indication of where the nose would be. Then we start from the middle of this line and draw this kind of wave shape. And also have this middle section here, which goes up until the middle of the nose. We draw the nose bridge, slightly curving up and also have the same indication over here too. And now as for the mouth, we have this upside down Y shape. We continue the line and then curve back. The mouth part, these cheeks aren't totally flat, but they have some shape and they go backwards slightly. And here on the other side, the same thing. And I have here an extra indication of how the shape of these cheeks would be, but it's not necessary. As for the chin, you can imagine the cheeks being wrapped over the chin, and then it curves back, disappears behind the chin again, and then we'll transition over to the neck. I also want to add some indications of where the whiskers would pop out. Just draw them very very lightly and leave a gap between the nose and where the first rows start. And you normally have about three rows where the third one is very slight already. And then as for the whiskers themselves, just some very simple curves that go to the side. And that's about it. And now a very important part, their eyes. We draw here this upper line. It's gonna be the upper line of the eyes. And you can vary the shape quite a lot which changes their emotional state. They can look more serious, or kind of silly, they kind of curious. They can also look sad and scared. It's completely up to you how you decide to draw them. Now I also have here this lower line, which is gonna be the inner eye corner and the lower eyelid. Why the lower eyelid? So here we have a very basic illustration. And you can already see that the cornea, this part here, is bulging out quite significantly. The proportions are very different from our eyes. So this has several consequences. First of all, cats cannot really look around that much with just moving their eyes. Instead they have to move their heads. And the other thing is, for drawing purposes, you have to remind yourself that it's very very round. The shape is very round, especially when you look at it from the side. And you can also see here that the lens and the iris are very flat. And also the eyelids have some thickness, have some width. And so let's fill in the eyes. You have this very very round shape, which converges with the line that we drew before, because parts of the eyelid will be blocked by fur and stuff. But we can see parts of this lower eyelid over here, which adds a little bit of extra three-dimensionality, a bit extra shape. So I personally like to add it 
but it's not entirely necessary. You can also go without it, of course. Now as for the pupils, we start here from this upper part, and you probably already know it, but uh, their shape changes with how much light influx there are, and also their emotional state. About that, there will be an extra video, but more information about extra videos will be at the end of this video. And so yeah, the pupil can change from simply a slit to a big round shape. Next off will be the ears. At first I want to find the middle of the eyes and draw a new center line until this point here where I have this intersection. And then also these curves here which are almost parallel to this middle line here but not quite. They spread out a little bit further. And so we have here these two dots, these two points which will be the inner corners of our ears. The outer corner is more at the back, pretty close to this center line here. And then we simply draw the ear shape. At first we have almost kind of a straight line, but then curves around. Just have to keep in mind that it doesn't go straight up like this. And also the orientation of the ears are, is not pointing straight forward like that, but they normally go different directions like so. But of course, the ears can move around quite a lot, so this way of drawing them is not the only way. Drawing the ears can be kind of complicated, but hopefully this helps a little bit. Now we curved around and on the other side here is kind of separated in two parts. We have this long part here, similar to the other side, and then this extra curve with extra skin that I guess is there for folding purposes. And then when the ears are folding back, for example. And then we have here a little bit of an extra curve that I like to add to give it a bit more shape. And we look at the other ear from the side. I have here this curvature, I try to get the height correct. And I have to keep in mind that the ear is not going straight up, but is slightly tilted forwards also, not just to the side, but also forwards. And also don't do the mistake and draw it like this. The tip is almost flat, so we have a very sharp angle which gets wider and wider as we get closer to the head. Then we draw the top of the head, which is almost flat, just a slight curvature. And here the inner hair of the ears, just slight indications. And they get thinner and shorter as we get to the tip of the ear. And as for the head shape, we cut off here this part, go around the eyes, and then have here this flat part for the forehead. And then you can decide to add here and there some extra fur to give everything a bit more shape, especially around here with the cheeks maybe, or you want to continue the mouth maybe, so you can give the head a bit more form like so. Now next off, let's move over to the paws. In this example here, we can draw very simple shapes, just almost completely follow the oval shapes over here. Just have the top and the bottom maybe a bit flatter. I draw in a slight indication of a toe, but that's about it. And that doesn't teach you much, so actually let me show you a little bit more. So I prepared a drawing of the underside of a paw, slightly from the side where you can see the individual paw pads and the toes go slightly apart. Now if you want to construct something like that, then what you can do is, if you imagine the original oval shape as a placeholder right here, you can add in some middle-sized oval shapes for the individual toes and a small knob for the carpal pad. And above that you have small oval shapes for the paw pads. Cover them slightly with fur, don't forget about that. And you don't draw them all the way at the front, you leave some space for some extra fur. This middle paw pad is simply constructed by having three oval shapes, which can overlap with each other. And as for the claws, you have the middle ones normally very close to each other, and the rest further apart. So with this, you could draw a paw in more detail. Let me quickly draw the rest of the paws, very simply, like before. And as for the legs, we have here these simple round shapes. We don't need more than just that. And they simply get wider and wider as they get further apart. But don't overdo it, of course. Like so. 
this leg is here is gonna be at the back so I don't need to draw more than that so we have this over here too just make these indications and they are supposed to be an approximation of the the muscles and stuff but it's far from being anatomically correct and we don't need to be super correct about that it's not necessary we just need to have a convincing cat at the end that's that's just it but it's good enough for that now keep in mind when you draw the shapes when we look at it from more of the front or the back then it would be flatter than it appears right now now here for the butt for the big butt all right as i said this is gonna be at the back so i don't need to draw the rest now let's fill in the belly and the belly can be bigger or smaller depending on how well fed the cat is so let's draw this one over here just like almost straight like so and cats normally have some extra skin if you ever saw a furless cat you probably know how wrinkly they look um, and so we have here some extra skin connects the at about the height of the knees the legs with the with the chest and the belly and so we have these extra curves here connecting everything also back here we have this extra connection all right then let's connect the head to the body, curve around, and also to the chest over here. As maybe some slight indications of the fur. And follow pretty much the spine. And then go up for the tail. You simply follow the curvature from before. Curve around like so. And then follow the curvature once again. And so we finish the sketch of our cat which we can use to build further. However, I'm not going to continue this drawing, but instead will show you some drawings that I prepared beforehand, and in the meantime, I can tell you some quick facts about cats. The first one is, cats spend about two thirds of their lifetime just sleeping. Well, it's probably not that surprising. Also, cats spend about one third of their waking hours just cleaning themselves. Well, at least it was the number that I found. Uh, some cats clean themselves more than others. Isn't that right, Hoppo? They hate water for a very good reason, because when their fur is wet, it cannot insulate as well. Also, it takes a long time to dry. So it makes sense that they hate or even fear getting wet. Cats' jaws cannot move sideways like ours, so they cannot chew large chunks of food. Them rubbing against people does not only have affection as a reason, but also they want to leave their mark behind. They have scent glands around their mouth, their tail, and also their paws. They gotta make sure that everybody knows who their servants are. A cat's heart beats about twice as fast as ours, so if you ever feel or listen to a cat's heartbeat, don't freak out, it's totally normal that it beats that fast. Last but not least, a quick list of some foods that you definitely should not let your cats eat. For example, onions, garlic, raw potatoes, green tomatoes, chocolate, grapes and raisins. And also be careful because a lot of house plants can be toxic too. So better make sure you buy the right ones. Alright, so let's take a look. This drawing here of this kind of mischievous looking little cat is from slightly from above. So we have to keep that in mind and draw in perspective. We have here these lines that connect the shoulders and the hip. We have the spine curving up and the front legs folded together like so. I'm not going to explain this part of the drawing because it very much depends on the style and this would just completely overblow this video. This video is just here for you to learn the basics, basic anatomy and how to make a basic sketch and from there it's up to you. And now the other one, it is slightly more comic styled and the eye level is at the ground so we're looking up to the cat while the paws are the same height as us. It is the same basic standing position from before but in this case I have to really think about the perspective. I used vanishing points as you were able to see before and drew everything, all these connections, all these lines accordingly. And what you can also see is that the eyes from this angle are almost completely blocked by the cheekbone. 
So that was the tutorial, and as I mentioned before, there will be more cat related ones. For example, I'm planning on having one about little baby kittens, and also about their emotional states and how their faces and body language changes. There will be one about more common but also more complicated poses, and also one about different breeds, because there are some major differences. And if you're interested, I drew a little comic about me and Hoko here, about us being literally inseparable. It's, it's silly, but also very short, um, so maybe it entertains you. Thank you a lot for watching, I really appreciate it. If you have some constructive feedback, you can let me know in the comment section. And if you want to support me and the show, then you can also go over to my Patreon page, although it's not necessary, just you watching the video means a lot to me. Alright then, have fun drawing.